Hey friendly neighbors, this missing class is all about how I created my dream life. I hope you can find something helpful here. I just wanted to share some of the techniques that I've used over the years to turn my biggest dreams into reality. I come from scarcity. At one point in college, I had 73 cents. I went to Penn and I remember standing at the ATM one day trying to take out $20 for the week and the receipt said I had 73 cents left. That was all the money I had in the world. I didn't have any family support. I put myself through college and grad school. The only person growing up who offered me any kind of support was my gram. She's the one who took me back to school shopping and every Friday we went to the bookstore and she bought me a new book and I looked forward to that all week. But I had 73 cents left. I also had a knowing, and a knowing is this feeling that you understand in your heart, in your soul, something is true, even though everyone else is telling you it's illogical, it's impossible, that will never happen. I had a knowing when I was 12 years old that, my New, that New York City was my true home to belong. And I also had a knowing when I was 12 years old that I would become a science teacher. I think the thing about New York City was I could already feel through Paul Simon songs that I listened to every day and through Late Night with David Letterman that I taped every day and watched after school and doing research in the library. I would just get books about New York City and I would look at maps of different neighborhoods and I would sketch them in my notebook and I just had a knowing that New York City was where I was going to find my people and where I was going to feel most like myself. And the thing about becoming a science teacher was I think even at 12 years old, I knew that my teen years were gonna be the hardest years of my life. And I just wanted to help other kids feel less alone and not feel as horrible as I did. So I came here for grad school at NYU and then I started teaching and I was $70,000 in debt with student loans. And I think the first year teaching, I was making $32,000. I would go to the West Village after school. I taught in the South Bronx and I would take the subway down to the West Village. The West Village was my dream neighborhood. It's the place where I felt the most alive and still do. And I would just walk around and just take in the energy and look up at the buildings and notice all the details the architecture and just the people and the energy and looking in windows like my characters in Take Me There do. <laughs> I totally do that. You'd be surprised how many people leave their shades up in New York City. Like even on ground floor apartments, you can look right in. I think they're saying like, yeah, I know my place is sweet. What? You can look in any time you want. So I'd walk around and feel the energy and feel alive and I just knew that I would live in the West Village. It was another knowing, even though the West Village is pretty much the most expensive neighborhood. And again, the knowing is just this feeling I had that was pure clarity to me, but illogical to everyone else. So I was living in other neighborhoods before I can move to the West Village, um, paying off student loans and trying to save what I could for the move. And then on my 30th birthday, my gram died. And my gram was like my whole family. And I had a knowing that she would die on my 30th birthday. And he even said it the morning of my 30th birthday. I remember even saying to my first class, I don't know why I said that, but I just said, I have a feeling that my gram's gonna die today. And when I was getting on the subway, after school, one of my kids said, I hope she don't, but she did. And to me, it was like a sign that it was time to turn that dream into reality of living in the West Village. So the first two weeks of summer vacay that year, I pounded the pavement of the West Village every day. I walked every street. I talked to supers. I talked to residents. I stalked every building. <laughs> I looked at listings in the New York Times and the Village Voice and I called brokers from pay phones all day. But all the brokers were yelling at me. The brokers were yelling at me like, you're never gonna find a one bedroom in the West Village for 1700. Is that your budget? 
that first of all, that's like 90% of your salary, so you can't pay that. <laughs> and two, you're not gonna find an apartment, a real one bedroom for 1,700. You're not gonna find anything in the West Village for under 2,500, and at 2,500, you're gonna be getting a small studio. So I had all these brokers yelling at me that what I was looking for didn't exist, but what existed was my vision of an apartment in the West Village that was beautiful and that was $1,700 a month. And I found it. And I lived in that apartment on Jones Street for nine years. And within nine years, the rent only went from 1,500 to 1,750. So yes, most of my salary went to rents. <laughs> and I think that happens in New York City, especially when you first move here. Um, or you're not making a lot, and of course paying off student loans. But I think I was 34 by the time I finally paid off my student loans. And then I kind of had a vision of a career change. I never thought I would do anything else but be a teacher. So when I was 12 years old and I had my knowing about being a science teacher, I just thought I'd be a science teacher forever, and that's what I would do. And I loved teaching, I loved my kids, I loved being in the classroom. But I also started writing a book in grad school and I had a knowing that the book I was writing would one day be published. So just like all those brokers were yelling at me about, you can't find a one bedroom in the West Village for 1700, that doesn't exist. Now everybody was yelling at me about publishing a book because they were like, you can't have a book published. No one has a book, you're a science teacher. Your background is science education what have you even taken a creative writing class? like what do you you can't so everybody was telling me that i would never have a book published but i had a knowing that this book would be published and the knowing was so strong that the imprint that rejected me twice when i sent the manuscript to them right they rejected me once you, you you think that would be enough to get the memo that like okay don't resubmit but i revised it and i resubmitted and they reje rejected it again so it was like did you not hear us the first time that imprint went on to publish my first eight books okay so then eventually my book sold enough copies so i could buy an apartment because part of my dream life when i visualize my best life is owning an apartment in downtown Manhattan. I wasn't sure where, but I knew it would be here somewhere. And I did this technique called creative visualization. Creative visualization is a methodology in which you visualize your dream life with vivid clarity, and then you take steps every day to make that dream reality. And part of creative visualization for me has always been scrapbooking. So if you happen to have read this first book of mine that got published called When It Happens, the character Sarah in that book, she does creative visualization and she does scrapbooking just like I did. And I had a scrapbook page while I was looking for this apartment of a wall of windows facing south because the sun apparently moves through the southern sky. So if you have windows facing south, you get light all day. The amount of light and the directness of the light varies throughout the year, but if you have windows that face south, that means your apartment is the brightest it can be. And my dream life involved a home that I owned here that was bright and airy and where I had a sweet view. Because one thing I love to do at night is look out my windows and look at all the other windows <laughs> and see all the lights. I love city lights and I love looking in people's windows. And even when I was like walking in the West Village all those years when I was teaching, I taught in the South Bronx and I would get on the subway after school and just come down to the West Village and walk around and just feel the energy. And I would look in people's windows <laughs> Um, and that's something I still love doing and just feeling that connection and sort of like wondering about their lives and like wondering what's going on in like their box, right? So when I finally found this apartment, it was three years after I first started looking, it was like the scrapbook page came to life because now I have that wall of windows facing south. So I wanted to share with you 
um, a quick writing exercise that you can do using this technique of creative visualization. And you can either pause this after each prompt or you can maybe come back to this, but this is just a fun writing exercise that, that's quick, but I think will really help you identify what's most important to you if you're not completely sure and also how to actually reach those goals. Okay, so the first thing that I'd like you to do is list your top three goals. Now these goals can be in any area of your life. They can be short-term goals or long-term goals. So just list your top three goals, the top three things you want to achieve the most. Next, put a star next to the goal that sets your soul on fire. You know which one it is. Which one of those three goals do you want the most? Now list three things you could do every day, realistically, three things you can do every day to work towards achieving that goal. So these are actions that support your goal because when you take an action, small or large, that supports your goal, it actually moves you closer to achieving your goal. So what are three things you could do realistically every day that would move you closer to achieving your goal? Starting today, do at least one of those things. And the key is really that creating your dream life is about starting now. It's not about starting tomorrow or on some other day in the future. It's about starting right now. This is something you can do right now. Start manifesting right now. So what's one thing that you can realistically do today, now, to move you closer to your goal? It could be a thing that takes 30 seconds. It could be a thing that takes five minutes. It could be a thing that takes an hour. That's totally up to you. The more action you take, the closer you will come to reaching that goal. So creative visualization basically in my life has been imagining your goal in vivid detail and then taking steps every day to make that goal a reality. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction, equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. That means positive energy from you results in positive energy to you. You attract what you put out. Another way to think about manifesting your dream life is clear vision plus hard work and positive energy equals your dream life. Or in Friday Night Lights speak, clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. Living your dream life is really about serving your purpose. Because something that I found in creating my dream life is this. When you do what you love, you're doing what you are. And in that way, you are serving your purpose. Now this can change what you love the most can change over the years. For example, when I first started teaching, I couldn't imagine doing anything else. And I loved teaching so much and that was my entire passion. But then becoming a full-time author became my passion and I wanted to do that the most. And so that's what I did. So over the years, what you feel the most passionate about might change, but the heart of your purpose lives on. Being a teacher, being an author, it was all about helping people. I know my purpose is to help people. I know that's why I'm here. But what if you don't know your purpose? What if you don't feel passionate about anything? This is something you can do right now to sort of identify what your purpose might be. And this is not something you necessarily have to write down like before. You can sort of just picture this, but if you do wanna write it down, writing something down, treasure mapping and dream boarding and scrapbooking, all of that sort of amplifies your vision and makes it even easier to manifest, right? When you have something to look at and refer to and writing and scrapbooking, these are all ways to sort of put your dream out there more elaborately for the universe to witness. So identifying your purpose and your passion. 
One thing that has helped me has been this. Imagine your best day ever. What are you doing? Who are you with or not with? Where are you? Imagine your best day ever in vivid detail, in as much detail as you can. Another thing you can ask yourself is this. What are you good at? We all have a gift in our DNA. What are you good at that you found other people maybe aren't as good as you at in your sort of immediate surroundings? Or what are you good at that other people have told you they admire about you? So what's that thing you love doing that other people have noticed too that you do really well? Your best day ever plus what you're good at indicates your purpose. Living your dream life is about living the life you want to live. It's not about a life that someone else is pressuring you to live. It's not about what you feel like you should do. It's not about what society tells you someone like you should do. It's, it's not about boxing yourself into anything. It's about living creatively outside the box. You have no time for haters. Like all those people who yelled in my face, the brokers who said I would never find an apartment in the West Village, everyone who said I would never have a book published. All of those people were wrong. While everyone was telling me it was impossible, I was busy making it happen. AKA story of my life. <laughs> so where do I get the motivation to keep going? This is an important question because everything that I've told you about has happened to me over years, over decades. None of this was easy, right? All of this took, I mean, years and years and the strength that I had to find, that I had to create was necessary to keep going. So where did my motivation come from? Where did I find the strength? I made a choice to turn pain into strength because when you experience trauma and you are a survivor, you have two choices. You can choose to turn your pain into strength or you can choose to become angry and bitter and cynical. It's like there are two different roads you can take after a background of trauma. You can choose to take the negative road. That's where you're gonna lash out at the world and everything's so unfair and why does he have what I don't have and why do they get what I don't get? And you're just gonna be bitter and cynical and turn people away and just curl up in victimization mode where your relationship to your pain is stronger than your relationship to anything else. That's one choice. I chose to take the positive road. The positive road means I'm generating my own happiness. I'm turning pain, pain into strength and using that as a fuel. I'm doing random acts of kindness. I'm choosing to be hopeful and always using creative visualization. Creative visualization is something that I've been doing for decades of my life and it has totally helped me manifest my dreams. My dream life is reality because of the process of creative visualization. Imagining your goal in vivid detail and then taking steps every day, that means very hard work, doing that work every single day with positive energy to manifest that goal. You are not alone. We're all a work in progress. You never get to a point where in personal development, you're perfect, right? It's never like, I've been working on myself for all this time and now I'm done, ta-da, like, no. <laughs> like we're all works in progress, the work is never done. But manifesting your dreams one by one is something that was totally possible for me and if I can do it, you can absolutely do it no matter where you come from. I wanna hear about your dream life. I wanna hear about your top goal and what you're doing every day to manifest it. I would love to see your comments. Again, you're not alone, we're all in this together. I'm still manifesting, I'm still dreaming, I'm still creating, and I'm so happy to share this with you and hopefully you found something useful and I would love, love, love to hear all about how you are creating your dream life. Until next time.